This is a pretty awesome piece of kit from MSI. Stick around to find out what it is and why it's awesome. This all-in-one from MSI is their 24GE 2QE. It features a 23.6 inch, otherwise known as 24 inch 1080p IPS panel. It's a pretty good looking device with uh, some rather thick borders, but with a relatively good reason. Up the front you'll find uh, basically a stereo mic configuration which is pretty cool, as well as a 1080p webcam which has kind of become a checkbox on the feature list but is still nice to see nonetheless. On the bottom you'll find two 5 watt speakers which we'll be taking a look at in more detail later but I wouldn't hold your hopes up as they are 5 watt speakers and really don't provide much sound quality in terms of you know hitting you in the face with uh, just luscious sound quality. They are alright and they do produce sound, so I guess that's a checkbox for speakers. It also has a good range of pivot, uh, sorry, tilt available with the included stand, but the stand is a 100 by 100 mil VESA mount, so you can actually take this off, mount it to a wall, or mount it to a custom, just general monitor stand if you prefer. I like that it's a generalised stand, and also the fact that the ventilation is kind of out of the way, doesn't blow against the wall, actually blows upwards in the intakes I believe are on the bottom, so that's quite nice as well. All the rear IO is also on the bottom, it's actually hanging downwards, which is both good and not so good in, in certain respects, we'll talk about that a bit more later. Now to cover the screen, um, it's actually a really nice screen, the colours are pretty good um, and up on the label at the top, um, as you can see, it does actually have the HDMI logo. That's because it has an HDMI in port as well, so you can effectively use this as a monitor as well as a uh, you know PC. Also, it supposedly has anti-glare, which is basically matte, has less blue light apparently, an anti-flicker system and also is a 178 degree IPS panel. We want to check that out, so as you can see, uh, pretty much from any angle you look at it, this thing looks pretty darn good. I would definitely recommend this for a media center type PC or anything you just uh, you can want to throw in a corner or maybe, you know, kitchen counter or even just on a desk to uh, use this as, you know, light gaming, in fact even relatively heavy gaming uh, as you'll see later, and also for media consumption as well. On the left hand side you'll find a power button, the screen mode button, hard drive activity LED, the screen mode switcher button, the on screen menu as in like you know you, the stuff you normally get on screens, um, the uh, arrow buttons, an SD card reader, two USB 3 ports, one of which is a charging port. I do like that the charging port is outward facing and I have tested this with a fair few memory sticks and don't worry the clearance on this still works as well which is pretty nice. Now, uh, this also, strangely enough, has a DVD player. You can get an optional Blu-ray player with this if you like, but this one we got is a DVD writer. I'm not too fussed, I probably would never use it in my life anyway, so I'm not too fussed about that. Now moving on to the uh, the base itself, I did actually want to point this out, it does have some rotation built into it, although the four pads on the side do generally make it quite hard to be able to you know, rotate it anyway, and there is also a locking screw in the centre if you wanted to hold it in place. On the bottom for the rear IO you find input uh, mic in and out, gigabit E22 killer LAN, a USB 2 port, HDMI out, two USB 3 ports, an HDMI in, HDMI in and the DC power in which uh, basically I means you've got a huge power brick, it's a 150 watt power brick as I'm assuming and uh, yeah I just want to make a quick comparison. At home uh, my parents actually have a 2013 iMac and if you want to go back and just pause there to see the differences between an an iMac and this for all in ones um, that's is quite it's quite clear cut that this is a fantastic uh, all in one it still looks good and is uh, generally just more performance uh, based cheaper and just generally more awesome we also happen to have the MSI GS70 uh, 970M version, which, uh, by the way, this uh, all-in-one has nine, a 960M compared to the 970M in the laptop, ironically making the laptop better than the desktop. Now, into games, um, this uh, did very well for gaming, even, uh, you know, even though it did kind of reach 90 degrees on the CPU and around about 85 on the GPU in terms of temperature and degrees Celsius. It did manage to, on ultra settings, hit about 30 FPS in Battlefield. On grid, it managed over, 30, uh, over 60, and the same with uh, Bioshock Infinite as well. Obviously, 60 FPS is the magic number we all want to see, especially considering this panel is only a 60Hz panel. 
In Crisis 3 it reached 26, which was still playable, but was a little bit laggy at times, especially in uh, areas of high action. It's still not a game changer, and remember this was running on high settings, so it wouldn't be too uh, difficult to just turn the settings down a tad. Now they also did want to mention, uh, MSI have sort of been posting this a lot, that their Namek software allows you to basically change up the audio um, as effectively like an equalizer but with different profiles for gaming, music and movies. You can also do stuff for your microphone as well to make it a little bit less noisy and stuff and it's, um, I'd recommend this more with the headphones um, if you're using headphones for this um, as generally speaking the, as said, the, the audio inbuilt isn't fantastic. I'm actually going to do an audio test with one of the royalty free Free to tune, uh, you know, tracks from YouTube, um, and uh, yeah, just stick around for that now. I'm um, just going to do a quick comparison. So as you heard, that wasn't fantastic. The speakers really aren't the best, but they are, I guess, still usable if you want to hear something. Although I wouldn't recommend them for music or real game audio. Now, in terms of actually using the device, it can get a little bit loud, and especially when it's running games, um, it did actually end up getting around about 90 degrees Celsius on the CPU, and around about 85 degrees on the GPU, which is incredibly hot and is almost near the thermal limit of most, uh, especially most mobile, um, processors basically. Um, it did actually even you know when it was up at that temperature run relatively loud. Um, I did find that the GS70 we had next to it often ran a tag quieter and ran cooler which is a little bit strange considering the surface area of this is a lot bigger. I would have liked to have seen the bezels reduced in size just a little bit as they are quite big and does sit quite low to the desk but with that vase amount on the back it's definitely uh, you know an option to be able to mount it on different things and it's pretty awesome. So the pros and cons of this are definitely that, in my opinion, it looks quite good. It's definitely powerful for what it is, especially in comparison to the iMac, and it does have a great screen with fantastic viewing angles. It also has a 4K option if you want to go for a more higher end, um, basically hardware and sort of uh, you know screen as well. It does have some fairly large bezels, and in my opinion, it runs very very hot and can be quite loud. And also the speakers, as I said, can be pretty bad. But those are all sort of minor things that generally you could probably get over quite easily. For me, this is going to be a 3 for 5 money, as realistically, in my opinion, I'd rather buy the GS70 laptop over this, um, mostly because it's roughly the same price, yet you're able to take the GS70 around with you and a uh, few other things. Also, for performance, you can get a 4. Functionality, because of that HDMI in, that I, I guess I didn't talk too much about, but generally, having an HDMI in so you can play something like your Xbox on the screen is just generally fantastic. For style, it's going to get a 4, um, just because I would have liked to see those bezels sort of shrunk down a bit and Titan GB score is going to get a 4 as well. It's definitely an awesome product and if you're in the market or looking for an all-in-one, you don't have much space and you want to put something that's still great for gaming and just general media use and stuff like that in your house, then this is something for you. I do really like the comparison to the iMac actually because it's it shows just uh, you know the, the differences of having something like a Mac for mostly sort of creative and general office use versus this which is a bit cheaper also you know you're gonna get more performance out of it and are able to do things like video editing and, and uh, you know design work and CAD and uh, you know 3D modeling a lot easier as well so that's pretty much it. Um, if you want to check out more detail on all the, the benchmarking, we've actually included the full table uh, of our benchmark results, minimum, uh, maximum and average, as well as the temperatures that we reached, uh, all on the website. Check out the written article, we should be able to click the screen right about now, so hopefully that will be up now. Um, and other than that, check out the website in general just for all the uh, you know new stuff we're posting. Um, we're trying to do more and more news uh, news type stuff just to keep you guys up to date. And also, obviously, most of the reviews we do on the, the channel also go to the website as well with a bit more information and just a general write-up in case you're interested. So, as I said, thanks for watching. Um, it definitely helps us out uh, if you would hit that subscribe button. It really does help. Uh, you, you'd be surprised. Also, please like. Um, if you've got any comments about this video, leave them in the comments down below. Um, what do you think of the all-in-one? Personally, I'm not the biggest fan of all-in-ones. They've kind of always 
been hindered, uh, in my opinion, from sort of the surface area and size and stuff like that. So, what do you think of this? And um, would you ever buy one? Do you own one already? What's it like? Let us know in the comments down below. Other than that, um, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, as I said, and we'll see you all in the next video. So thanks for watching this Tech Team GB video, you've probably seen enough of me already so I'm going to go away right after I say if you haven't already like or dislike, just let us know why in the comments down below as well. Um, check out some of our other videos, hopefully there'll be some somewhere around me. And then also um, feel free to subscribe as well, that really helps us out um, and yeah obviously shows companies that you love us. So if you do love us, check us out on Facebook or Twitter, hopefully there will also be some stuff around here maybe. Um, but otherwise that's pretty much it from me so we'll see you all in the next video.